everyone. Welcome to the American Film Festival in Deauville. I am Jeannie Godula, of course, here with France 24's film critic Lisa Nesselson. Now, Deauville has hosted this festival for almost half a century. Uh, this festival is held in the Normandy region of western France, not far from the D-Day beaches, which is actually one of the reasons why they decided to start this festival here several years ago. Uh, Lisa, before we talk about this year's festival, which obviously is being held under very unusual circumstances, just set the stage for us a little bit. Tell us about what the festival is like in normal time. Well, when it started in the mid-70s, there, most of the people of old Hollywood were still ambulatory and more than happy to come to France. So you can see some of those names uh, stenciled on the uh, bathing changing rooms out on the beachfront. I wrote down a few today. Elizabeth Taylor, Robert Mitchum, Jessica Tandy, Sid Charisse. And then in the 90s, I was here and saw some of the most prominent writers and artists in France quaking in their boots because they were paying tribute to the great Clint Eastwood, who of course has always been admired here. Um, and I have to say this evening, um, the, the opening ceremony was extremely moving. It's become kind of trendy to bash uh, old white men. And we had a magnificent tribute from Michael Douglas to his father, Kirk Douglas, whose incredibly distinctive uh, dimpled chin is on the poster this year. And uh, he said that because uh, uh, his father had the, uh, the sense to die in February before COVID really took over at the age of 103, they'd never been able to have a proper memorial. And so he was thanking the festival for making this tribute sort of a memorial. And also a wonderful pianist came out and played a medley of songs uh, by the great Ennio Morricone, the composer who died recently. So I think those are two old white guys that we can say <laughs> thank you to for making the world a better place. But uh, what, uh, you know, after the, uh, the truck attack in Nice that mowed people down on the beach, uh, the next festival here, there were concrete barriers here, so one feels very safe. And of course, now we're fighting uh, not possible terrorism, but something invisible that mm. uh, is an equal opportunity Lisa, killer. Lisa, just tell us, tell us a bit more about the security measures. What kind of things have been put in place here? Uh, well, they're very, very serious about wearing a mask. Uh, and uh, and I thought the auditorium would feel a little bit empty with every other seat uh, not filled, because this is one of the great auditoriums in Europe, in fact, in the entire world. Fabulous sound, enormous screen, incredible sight lines. When the independent American filmmakers well, come here, they well, look out and say, I think this is more people than have ever seen this movie ever, you know, assembled in one place. So it, it, it still, even with only 700 people instead of 1,500, mm. feels pretty full. And also uh, the Minister of Culture, Rosaline Bachelot, gave a magnificent speech about how important it is for people to go to the movies. And in France, we've had the privilege of being able to do that for about two months now, and people are starting to go back to cinema. So I personally, uh, don't feel unsafe going to movie theaters. I feel more queasy on public transportation or just walking down the street. Well, It'll no, just to jump in, what, what's interesting here in regard to the security measures uh, for the fans, uh, we're on the red carpet right now, but all alongside the red carpet, there were hundreds of fans who turned out just like every year, it felt like, but everyone had their mask on, which I think is really great that everyone was, was playing the game and not trying to push in and get too close to, to the celebrities who were here. Like, for example, in the Venice Film Festival, where they put up a huge wall mm -hmm. to set separate um, people who were trying to get to see the fans there. Uh, every year, Lisa, the Deauville Film Festival also has a competition. This has been going on for some 25 years now, and it's a competition of independent American film. That's really the specialty. Usually it's a chance for young, struggling filmmakers to come to France, but this year I think a lot of them were just really disappointed. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> how could you not be? You would have gotten an all-expenses-paid trip to uh, to beautiful Deauville, and it is a beautiful town and a wonderful place to see movies, and the audiences are extremely enthusiastic. Um, so I, when the, the competition started 26 years ago, um, there were 10 films in competition. This year there are 15, which leads one to believe that, mm -hmm. you know, American independent film is doing pretty well. And of those 15, eight were directed by women. And speaking of uh, women... Uh, uh, about two blocks that away is where uh, Coco Chanel's very first boutique was in 1913. And I was thinking <laughs> she probably could have designed some very <laughs> fetching masks to go, you know, to match. I would have loved outfits. a Coco <laughs> Chanel mask. Uh, get, let's get back to the competition. So one of the films that I know you said you've seen and you liked is Cajillionaire. Just tell us a quick bit about that and then we can show a clip. Well, Miranda July is one of the most original, iconoclastic, interesting American filmmakers and writers. And uh, this one is a gem. It 
it, uh, it premiered in Sundance, and it's about a, a, a married couple and uh, their 26-year-old daughter, and together they uh, scam and con and do dishonest things quite ingenious in order to get by in modern America in Los Angeles because they've got to make the rent, they've got to eat, and uh, they come up with really interesting ways to do that. All right, let's take a look. Kajillionaire in competition in Deauville this year. There's a camera there, there, and there. Cash. No, nope, many order. This is not a cheap tie. Most people want to be cajillionaires. That's the dream. That's how they get you hooked. Hooked on sugar, hooked on caffeine. Ha, 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 cry, cry, cry. Me, I prefer to just skip. So do I. February, March, April. Uh, we may have to pay in installments. Rent is an installment. It's a monthly installment. Now, another film and competition um, that's directed by a woman is First Cow. Yes, I haven't seen this yet, but I hear great things. Kelly Reichardt, another iconoclastic, very independent uh, writer-director, and uh, apparently it's set on the American frontier in the mid-1800s, and it's about two possibly immigrants who uh, want to bake things, but in order to do that, they rely on the uh, the main output of a cow, which I guess would be milk. Butter. <laughs> that's necessary. <laughs> So um, so I think uh, that, right. that we're in for a treat because she won the main prize here. I can't believe that was in 2013 mm. for Night Moves, which uh, was a, uh, uh, some people would say, eco-terrorism tale, uh, eco-conscientiousness. Lisa, let's get back to the opening ceremony that was just uh, happening tonight. Uh, it started with this tribute we were mentioning briefly of Michael Douglas uh, to his father, Kirk Douglas. So let's just take a listen to what he had to say. I always was asked, you know, what's your favorite movie? And I sort of use his line a lot when he says, you work as hard on your failures as your successes. And that's true. I think the one thing that identified Dad was his tenacity and his belief that he could do anything and that he would give it his full and complete uh, effort. That was Michael Douglas there just a moment ago, paying tribute to his father, Kirk Douglas, who died at 103 in February of COVID. Uh, Kirk Douglas, whose face is on the poster at Deauville this year with that great little iconic dimple that he always had. Lisa, just a quick word uh, again about Cannes, how the festival has decided to bring the Cannes Film Festival into this festival because, of course, Cannes was canceled. They don't like to use the word canceled. They say it was held, uh, you know, not in the traditional way. but Put off. Put, uh, basically canceled. Um, and so uh, we spoke to Bruno Bar who was the director of the festival earlier today, and this is what he had to say about why he wanted to invite 10 films that were supposed to be shown in Cannes to Deauville. Let's listen. Deauville is a festival with films. It is important that there are films because a festival without films doesn't exist. A festival without directors exists. In an act of solidarity, I invited the Cannes Festival to come and present a dozen films that I selected from Thierry Femeau's films, because I think at some point art forgets borders, and there comes a time when you have to be generous, charitable. You have to understand what's at stake, and what's at stake is cinema. I find all the little disagreements ridiculous, to be honest with you. Bruno Bard there, the director of the Deauville Film Festival, talking to us about Cannes and this decision to screen 10 films that were supposed to be shown in Cannes here. Lisa, tell us a bit more about that. Well, it's an astonishing thing because usually film festivals are, are very, very jealously guard their, their thematic uh, feelings, their, their stuff that they've managed to find. And uh, because Cannes uh, was put off uh, temporarily, uh, they, uh, they, they picked 54 films and gave them a Cannes 2020 designation. Uh, saying, you know, had we had the festival, these movies would have been shown. So to show 10 of them here, uh, some of them are world premieres, uh, primarily the French titles. But this this is an astonishing thing because this has always been the American Film Festival. And now, as several of the people who spoke on stage uh, at the opening ceremony said, it is a, a film festival, period. And indeed it is. And, and one of these uh, 10 films that will be shown here is called Last Words. Uh, it's by Jonathan Nossiter. Tell us about that. Jonathan Nossiter, along with us, is one of 
of the Americans who's going to be here because he lives in Europe. He's actually a filmmaker who started out as a, a wine steward and uh, is now an organic farmer in, uh, in Italy trying to rescue heirloom vegetables organically. And so he will be coming with uh, one of his main actors, Charlotte Rampling. And Last Words is set in 2086, and uh, it's about uh, that it's old standby, the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Now, not just Cannes is invited here to Deauville, but also an animated film festival uh, called the Festival of Annecy, Annecy, a town in the French Alps. And in the second weekend, they'll be showing quite a few films uh, from Annecy, including one called Calamity. This is a wonderful initiative because I can't emphasize too much how France wants to make sure that there will be subsequent generations who will want to leave the house and go to the movie theaters. And so they make opportunities for very young people to get used to going to a film, the joy of going to a film, especially with a family member. And so uh, for just 10 euros, kids can buy a pass to see three movies, including the one that won in Ansi, which is the world's most significant animation festival. It's enormous, but it was entirely digital this year. And it's the story of the childhood of Calamity Jane. The animation is exquisite. It's made by French people. Uh, the dialogue is in French, but it's set in the American Wild West. Lisa, we just have a few minutes left before we wrap up. I mean, you've been coming to this festival almost as long as I have. Uh, do you have a favorite story, favorite anecdote? Uh, well, I was just thinking because the marvelous American actor Chadwick Boseman died very recently. He was here uh, six years ago with Get On Up, playing James Brown. And uh, he was here with uh, his producer, who happened to be Mick Jagger. And I have to say, <laughs> that was one of the hardest to get into press conferences, I, I, this side of Quentin Tarantino. I remember that. I actually hosted on stage that night with Mick Jagger and uh, with the rest of the team uh, for that movie. And afterwards, I got a chance to dance with Mick Jagger at the after party, one of the perks of getting to be the MC here in Deauville. Lisa, thank you so much uh, for your time, for your expertise. Elisa Nesselson, our film critic here on France 24. Do stay with us. There is a lot more to come.